Do you want to learn how to install a float switch on a ducted air handler made by Samsung? Today you're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I'm going to be teaching you how I install a float switch on a slim duct air handler. And then we're also going to be going over some tips for the installing of this slim duct air handler that you might not know. Give this video a like, thumbs up, hit the bell, ding! And then definitely share this and join my channel if you want to support and help me grow. If you don't have a comment with a question, that's okay. Leave a comment, tell me who you are, where you're from, say hi, hello. I definitely love the questions because that leads to more content. But if you don't have a question right now, just say hi. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about how is how I installed the float switch so that you know, and then after that, we're gonna talk about a couple installation tips. Now this is the gravity drain right here. See the gravity drain? Gravity feeds out of the ducted air handler here and it's on the bottom. Now the top connection is for the pump. There's a built-in pump and usually we use that, but in this case we're using the gravity drain. And most cassettes have a pump as well. You may not need to do an installation option where you select the drain pump being used and I'll show you that here in a second but let's go ahead and go over how I installed this float switch. Now this float switch is AquaGuard. If you can see that right there and you can see this little float right here. If I pull this up it will cut the um, it will open the contacts and this basically will shut the system down causing an error code to appear and it'll no longer operate which is great because if I fill this pan up with water, I want to cut the float. I don't want to have the water pour over the pan. Now, how did I install this? It's very, very simple. Okay, let me turn on a flashlight so you can actually see a little bit better. I want you to be able to see. What I did was I tied it in to the room sensor. I'm going to show you that on the schematic, but you can see it's that white plug there. You see how one of the wires has been cut and I basically wired the float switch in series, okay? So I'm gonna set the flashlight down and I'm gonna show you that real quick. See this? All right, so we're breaking this one wire. See that? This other wire is continuous, it's not broken. But the other wire is ran in series with this float switch and that's how easy it is to install this. Now I'm gonna show you on the schematic where this is. You just pull the plug off, cut it. You don't have to use these wire connectors. You can use a different type of wire connector. All right, let's take a look at this. All right, let's see if we can zoom in here. See how it says 10K room, CN412, white. That's a white Molex. It says one, two, and it says room 10K. This is the room sensor. This is what measures the temperature of the ambient air being pulled in through the return and I can actually select this sensor I can select that sensor to be the sensor that I used to turn the air conditioner on and off you can use that sensor or you can use the main controller as your sensor to read the temperature and shut the unit on and off I'll show you the wired controller that I've got installed on this equipment and then we'll talk a little bit more but let's go ahead and ducted air handler here it is a 18 see that ajo 18 it's connected to a four ton free joint multi and let's talk about the wiring a little bit in case you wanted to learn more about the wiring we have l1 and l2 there and that is the power coming from our outdoor equipment because our outdoor equipment powers the indoor equipment then we have our F1 and F2. This is our communication from our outdoor unit. And this is how the indoor and outdoor communicate. And then F3 and F4, they go directly to our wired controller. F3 and F4, this is what communicates, the remote controller communicates to the unit via F3 and F4. So you gotta have F3 and F4. Sometimes you use V1 and V2, which is 12 volts power supply. And it just depends on what controller you're using. Some wired controllers need the V1 and V2, but the controller I'm using just needs the F3 and F4. Now, typically these units are installed using these brackets. You use some all thread and 
you would use some unistrut sometimes, but mostly all thread, and uh, or you can use a hung right bracket. We've used some of those, but we had to run the return over, so you can't really mount the unit. So it's pretty easy install here, but you got to have a float switch. You got to have a pan. You got to make sure you have a place to clean out your drain, and we do have that as well. One thing I will mention, because that's the clean out. One thing I will mention is that depending on the location of the ducted slim duct air handler, if it's above 86 degrees or it's high humidity, like above 85% humidity, then you may need to definitely insulate this drain line. You may need to also insulate the cabinet of the slim duct because you don't want it sweating. And that's something that can happen, especially in a very high humid, high temperature environment. So. And that insulation needs to be able to stand up to the temperature and humidity that you have in the environment. So make sure you keep that in mind when you are trying to source the right insulation. Now, let's take a look at the wired controller. If you have any questions about the Slim Duck air handler made by Samsung, let me know. I'm here to answer those questions. Really nice air handler. A really nice duck job. Unbelievable. I love it. I love foam, by the way. Foam is awesome. One thing I want to say about foam is th the reason that we install Samsung in foam houses is because they have the capability of modulating their variable capacity. So it's better for a foam house because it doesn't take as much cooling and you're able to start up very slowly and softly. And as you need during the heat of the day, as you need more power, then this system is able to ramp up its capacity instead of wasting uh, really copious amounts, large amounts of electricity, it's able to just basically modulate. It's kind of like cruise control. When you need more, cruise control will ramp up a little bit, so it's really nice. Let's look at that wired controller now. This right here is a remote controller. It's 68 degrees in here. Got it set to 65. Fan is set to auto. I can turn the fan speed up, put it back to auto. Nice wired controller. Very nice. Let's go check, check the temperature output. All right, 55 degrees. Using my dual induct psychrometer, made by Fieldpiece, SDP2. This thing works great. Because that registers way up there. Easy to get to. Although, I really need to replace these probes. They are messed up. I broke the other one. I only got one left. I need to order a couple more. This is the simple controller that was installed on that free joint multi system on the ducted air handler. I found this by going to samsunghvac.com and looking under the technical documents. All right here's the installation manual. You've got a submittal for this, but we're going to click on the manual. And the reason I'm clicking on this manual here is to show you that in the option settings, you can actually set up to use the pump. There's error codes. And then this right here is the option settings. So right here, I can use the temperature display. The sensor selection can be the indoor unit, that room sensor, or the wired remote controller. That's under main menu one, sub menu number two. And then now I can look at the submittal for the ducted air handler here. And you can see that that right there was the simple touch controller that is compatible with this equipment. And then we've got the 16 aug times two control wire between outdoor and indoor unit, DDC type control. All right, let's go back and let's look at the installation manual for this unit, the ducted Samsung. Scroll down and then you're gonna see the option settings right here and this shows you installation procedure for setting the indoor unit addresses and installation options it's going to be segment number eight all right and then we're going to scroll down you're going to be able to see all of the installation procedures and segment number eight is right here using of drain pump so make sure you set the installation options if you are using the drain pump. And make sure that if it's set from the factory for that as the default, that you know that. And when you use the pump, you gotta have an air siphon. See that right there? And that's to make sure you have a smooth drain. 
All right. Hope you liked the video. Hope you learned something. Remember, you can get lots of information online about Samsung's equipment, all the service manuals, installation manuals, user guides. It's all there for you. Check out the link in the description to go to their website and to learn more. And as always, this is Tad reminding you, I will keep you cool if you let me.